Hey, it's Jason Price with Mach 1 Aviation. I'm here at the world headquarters for Fly This Sim. I'm going to be going through a few scenarios with you today. Uh, first one we're going to do is start up the G1172 and take it for a spin. I'm going to go ahead and arm the uh, standby battery here. Battery master switch on, alternator master switch on, beacon and nav lights on. Adjust the mixture, adjust the throttle. So mixture full rich, crack the throttle about a quarter inch. Go ahead and start the magnetos here. Okay, started up nice. We have 1,000 RPM. And we'll go ahead and turn on the avionics master bus. One and two. MFD turns on. All right, everything looks good. Now we're going to get set for takeoff here. We have our mixture rich. We have our throttle about a quarter inch at about 1,000 RPM. We're going to trim our elevator for takeoff position. Make sure our rudder trim is neutral. And we're ready to go. There we go, about 1,000 RPM. Mixture rich. Clear for takeoff. Landing light on. Parking brake release. Add on smooth power. Use that right rudder to stay on the center line here. Airspeed's alive. Engine instruments are all in the green. 55 knots and rotate. A little bit of right rudder on that climb out. What you're doing is just using that horizon there. Make sure your wings are level and your pitch is stable. Make small changes to your pitch as you're looking outside if you need to change your climb rate and your airspeed. Okay, now we're here. The next scenario we're going to do is we're going to show uh, two different ways to level off. The first one we're going to use as a cruise power setting. So our power is going to be set in cruise and we're going to leave it there. We're going to maintain our altitude just using our pitch. Uh, the scenario we're going to put together is starting at 4,200 feet on a heading of 090, and uh, we're just going to fly out that way. We're going to capture 5,000 feet here. So first thing we're going to do is set our heading bug, I'm sorry, our altitude bug to 5,000 feet. So we're going to tap on our altitude bug for the thousands. We got 4,600, and now we're going to use the small knob here to do the hundreds of feet. We'll get that up to... 5,000. Next thing we'll do is our heading bug. If you see on your MFD here and your PFD, I use the MFD because it's more central, take our heading bug, you just tap on which direction you'd like to roll it, come out a little bit, and twist in the direction you'd like to go. So that'll take us to 090, right on the money we're going to maintain 090, maintain 5,000 feet, and we're going to level out with a fixed power setting. We're going to set it to uh, 2400 RPM and we'll maintain whatever airspeed that gives us. Okay, there we go. All right, once you get stabilized here, make sure you got full power and use that trim to let the airplane get stable in its pitch attitude. So you can spend your attention doing other things here. There we go, 90 knots. 4,600 for 5,000 feet. 090 on the heading. 4,700 for 5,000. And we're going to start bringing our nose down. Start accelerating the aircraft. As the aircraft accelerates, you want to trim that pressure off of your hand. Ease off on that right rudder pressure. and maintain your power setting at 2400 RPM. As the airplane accelerates, the RPM will increase. Small, smooth, steady pressures on the control. Airspeed's increasing, altitude slightly high, but we'll be correcting that slowly and steadily. 
decrease our power slightly to maintain 2,400 RPM. Ease off on that right rudder pressure. The key here is really just small, smooth, and steady input based on what you see inside and outside of the airplane. All right, once you've got the airplane stable, you're able to maintain a heading and an altitude. We are going to start making it a little bit more difficult by failing some of these instruments that you're using inside the airplane. Now, because we're visual right now, that shouldn't change all that much because you have your outside frame of reference, which is what you're using for your primary navigation anyway. We'll go ahead and uh, arm the fail. And we're going to tap on our HSI here, which will fail our magnetometer. We'll get a warning, magnetometer failure, and now we're using our pitch attitude and our outside reference to maintain our altitude and our heading. And once you've gotten the hang of that, you can go ahead and start increasing your workload just a little bit more here. You can fail your air data computer, and that will take away your airspeed, altitude, and vertical speed information. So you have to take your eyes from your primary flight display and bring it down to your standby instruments here to get that information. So we'll arm our fail, and we'll tap on any one of those instruments, which will fail our air data computer. And of course, as I was doing that, I let the nose drop. So we'll go ahead and correct our altitude here. We'll bring our nose up just a bit. Let the airplane stabilize at 5,000 feet again. You just want to keep your scan moving here, being able to look outside, maintaining your horizon. Now what we're going to do is we're going to make a left turn all the way around to 270, and we're going to use that using our compass. So our compass is located in the middle of the screen here at the top, and we're just going to start our turn to the left here using our attitude indicator to get us into the turn, taking a look outside at the horizon, making sure it's doing what we want it to do. A little bit of left rudder to maintain coordination of the aircraft. And bring the nose down a bit to maintain 5,000. Okay, turning through north now. Airplane's wanting to climb again. So let the nose come down a bit. Beautiful sunset over North Carolina. And we're coming up on 270 here. Go ahead and start our rollout. We've got 270, we've got 5,000 feet, and a beautiful sunset. All right, once you've got your aircraft under control, you're able to maintain your heading using your compass and your altitude using your standby altimeter. We're going to go ahead and fail the last remaining piece of this primary flight display here, which is our AHARS, which gives us our attitude information. We're going to arm fail. We're going to click on the PFD attitude indicator. And now our only source of information is outside the cockpit or we have our standby attitude indicator here. So since we are visual, this is really more of an inconvenience than any kind of emergency or situation that could cause a lot of concern. You just need to practice, make sure this is something that uh, you're very comfortable with. And you want to spend most of your time looking outside the airplane anyway. Okay. Good. Okay, in this scenario, we are going to level the airplane off at 5,000 feet. This time, we're going to maintain a constant airspeed. This is the second way to 
level an airplane off, and this scenario would be used primarily for working the traffic pattern or if air traffic control told you to maintain a certain airspeed. So what we'll do is we'll, uh, we're at full power, we're at 4,300 feet, we're at uh, 88 knots in the climb, and uh, when we get close to 5,000 feet, yeah, about 50 to 100 feet before our altitude, we'll start reducing our power, and what will happen is that'll let the nose come down to maintain its airspeed. And in this scenario, when any time you're maintaining a constant airspeed, you're going to be controlling your airspeed with your pitch and your altitude with your power. And uh, I'm going to demonstrate that here for you right now. All right, we're 4,700 climbing to 5,000. Get back to our heading of 090. I'm going to go ahead and start reducing my power here at 4,900, and we'll maintain an airspeed of 90 knots. So I'll let the airspeed increase slightly. We're going to let the nose come down a little bit. We'll be controlling our airspeed with our pitch and our altitude with our power. So we're climbing a little bit, and we're a little slow, so we can bring that nose down just a little bit, increase our airspeed, help maintain that altitude. Reduce our power slightly. We're starting to climb just a little bit. And now we'll increase slightly. So it looks like about 2,100 RPM is going to get us what we want here. 